Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Julie here giving you a message from the Lord. I'm so thankful for this one because it's it's just so needed. That's all I got to say. To God be the glory that we're here. And please like, share, and partner with us as we go forth sharing the messages of Christ. And so let's go ahead and get started. Father, I thank you for this message today. May it resonate. May it be one that brings us all near to you. And I just give you the praise and the glory for these words that will touch all who hear today. I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The question I want to ask you today really is what happens when you reject Jesus? Now, some of you may say, hold up, wait a minute. I'm not rejecting Jesus. However, if you were one that has just thought you don't need Jesus, I want to share with you today seven plus one things that will happen if you decide to go that route. I can speak about this because I did go that route. There was a time in my life where I absolutely hated him. I hated God and I wanted nothing to do with any part of any of it. It was a very, very deep, dark time of my life with a lot of loss. I wasn't coping well and I just thought that I could get by doing it my way. And even though the song might say, I did it my way, doesn't mean that, that uh, we can if we're going to go the distance. And so the first thing I want to take you to, or you can write down, is that when you reject Jesus, you will have no peace. And I can certainly live by that. I had absolutely no peace. And I want to give you the scripture that supports what I'm going to tell you. And that is found in the book of John. And it's so simple, but yet it's something that that we miss, especially if you've never had peace. You don't know what having peace is like because you've never had it. And it's John 14. But you see, when, when I just really just kicked Jesus to the curb before he could do it to me, I thought, you know, it was it was a time that that there was so much pain and so much loss. And I had never cried out or been so happy in my life to have it all destroyed in a second. You know, when, when you suffer the loss of, of your closest loved ones, it, it changes who you are if you let it. And, and you might say, well, it changes who I am in the way that that life isn't the same. However, for me, oh, it changed who I was. <laughs> it, it, it was not a pretty picture and I had no peace. What does John 14 verse, chapter 14 verse 27 tells us this. 14, oh, and let me read the right scripture. <laughs> I don't know what happens here. Well, my eyes are clear and, and can see in the name of Jesus. But he says this, this is Jesus speaking and he says, peace I leave with you. This is 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I wasn't afraid, I was grieving, I was angry, and, and not following the word, obviously, and I had no peace. Jesus died and gave us peace, peace I leave with you. See, when you reject Jesus, not only do you reject him, but you reject the gifts that he gave you. You reject peace by default. I didn't know that, nor did I really care. The people around me, oh, they sure would probably, probably help her. And they weren't even praying to Jesus or Yeshua or God at all. They were praying to some, probably a rock or something somewhere. And, and so with that, when you reject Jesus, you will have no peace. Society looks like it should because it's rejected Christ. So when you begin to see all these angry, fussy, nitpicking people with the same name that everyone is now picking on, you begin to see the love gone cold. Because of the rejection of Jesus, there's no peace. The second thing that is even more important is also in John. We're going to be in two different scriptures. But John 4. You cannot... Now this is kind of a, a tricky thing, but I'm going to explain this in a way that I know you'll understand. Love can't move through you when you reject Christ. It can't. And again, our society looks like the, God, like the opposite of the God it rejected. Our society is filled with so much hate and so much, uh, so much, so much retribution, so much wickedness, so much debauchery, and all of these things. Well, of course it would, because there's no love. 
See, when I rejected Jesus, I was really more hurt and angry and felt betrayed because I I lost the love of my life. I lost a family. I lost I lost a future that I thought that I was moving into living and in an instant it was gone. And and I couldn't quite grasp how a Jesus and a God who was out of love would just rip everything in my life apart. And and I hated him for a very long time. And I hated how I felt. I hated everything, if you want the honest truth. I mastered the art of the hate. Let's just be clear. But you know what? Love could not move through me. It could not. It could not. I masked it with so many things. And, I'll, and, and I'm gonna camp out here well, I'll wait till I get to my next point to show you something. But love can't move through you. In John 4, 16, it reads this. And let me turn my page to this. It reads this. Wrong verse. Wrong scripture. First John. <laughs> Lord, please help me get to the right books and have it written the right way. In the name of Jesus. First John 4, 8. First John 4, 8. 1 John 4, 8. Love can't move through you if you reject Jesus. Why? Because he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So when you reject Jesus, there's no love, okay? There's no peace. So the love of God can't move through you to anyone else. You are blocking it. And, and I know what what that is like and it not only was destroying my life but also it wasn't healthy for the people that I was around which which then they started distancing themselves because why wouldn't they I mean who wants to be about miserable people right and I was but I was only so miserable because of the pain and the grieving of the loss that that I was not really grasping with I probably should have sought grief counseling, but I didn't. I did not. I just did other things that I'll get to in just a second. Now, the other thing is that so we recognize you have no peace. Love cannot move through you because God is love. And when you reject Jesus, you reject the Father and there is no love. But the Holy Spirit is also grieved, which when I started learning that part and growing to know the Holy Spirit, no wonder why everything in my life was so void. It was like a shell that was existing with nothing in it. You ever have one of those, it's like those those chocolate eggs that that you're excited about and then you bite into it and it's and it's hollow. Those irritate me. I want the I want it solid. I don't want I don't want a shell. I want the whole thing. Dark chocolate, the whole ball of all chocolate. Let's be clear that you need a shiver to or cleaver to cut that thing because it's so thick and full. Yeah. I, I don't want the thing that's got nothing in it. But that's that's what happens. That's what you will live like is just hollow, an empty shell of existence, because the Holy Spirit will be so grieved that there's no room, there's no place. You will have forced him out because God is love and with God comes his Holy Spirit. And when you go back to Genesis and you see that you are birthed from the design of the Holy Spirit, and then when you reject that which birthed you, you are rejecting your very existence in many ways, which brings us to some other things. But in Galatians 5, I wanna show you this. And I like reading it from different, from different um, versions because it reads a little bit different, which is fine. Whatever Bible you have, I'm not going to get so religious and tell you you're not a Christian if you're not reading a King James or 1611. or I, Just read a Bible. Pick one that you can read. Read it and you'll grow. It's the same spirit. To God be the glory. You read in the Bible and not porn. Okay, so there we go. Praise God. Now, in Galatians 5.22, which I don't know how you read porn. You probably watch it, but you get the idea. Turn that off. Open your Bible. You'll grow. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith. Galatians 5.22. <sighs> meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So, 
Jesus gave us his peace. When you reject Jesus, you reject peace. You reject the Holy Spirit, which means you're rejecting joy, check. You are rejecting love, uh, check. You are rejecting uh, long-suffering, check. You are rejecting gentleness, oh yeah, check. Uh, goodness, yeah, that doesn't, faith in what? If, if you reach, hello, okay, so here I was living, living so messed up, rejecting God and the things of God and his son, Jesus Christ, because I was mad and I was hurt. Instead of going to him and saying, please help me. No, 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 no. I'm mad at you. I want nothing to do with you. You wrecked my life. I was, I was not in a good place because I was left for dead. Okay. I was left for dead. I was in a hospital room, and those of you, I'm not going to get into all the details of this, but those that glorify socialistic medicine, it's a nightmare. It is an absolute nightmare. And I sat in an emergency room for five days. At the end of that fifth day, when the doctors finally saw me and finally saw what, what was happening, I was rushed into emergency because emergency surgery because I would have died. There was no time to call any, there was no time for nothing, nothing. So as I was going through this, um, my fiance was with her and I lost everything, instant, gone. I hated everything. It was the deep, darkest betrayal that through that, if God knew what I desired and gave it not, then why would I want to be with that God? Because I thought God, God gives only good things. Well, where's this good? This is not a good thing. Maybe God didn't give it to me. See, there are some things. Sometimes we take that which is not good. Then when we lose it, we blame God and say, well, I thought you were supposed to give me the good things. And God's like, I did. That's not good. It took me a long time to get that. See, so I was very angry blaming God. But I didn't check with God as a see. See, there's a lot of things I didn't know, but I still hated God and still rejected him. So don't do what I did. Just don't do it. Just go to God, take his word, pray, and he will help you through. I wish I would have known that and not taken some of the raps that I did. So the Holy Spirit is grief. There's nothing. There's nothing. It was just an empty, lifeless shell. And so what happened was this. This turns to, to point number, number four. There's no purpose for your life. When you reject Jesus, there will be no purpose because where are you going? There's no direction. There's no direction. For me to mask everything, I started dancing. I became a competitive dancer. I danced, I, country, West Coast swing, ballroom, Latin. I danced six hours a day, traveled every other weekend for years. That was my coping. Did it help? Yeah, it was, it was good, but did it help me solve my problems? No, it did not. What I needed was to get in front of the Lord with the word of God, but I ran. See, I ran because I was hurt. I ran because I was angry. I was just angry and hurt and miserable existence of a shell with no joy, which joy is Jesus, others, you. I'd had none of that. No, it was me. And that's, and, and it's not a very healthy place to live. And that's why I'm sharing some of these things with you today. So that regardless of what you're going through, if it feels like God has just ripped everything out of your life, a child, a fiance, um, your husband, your children, whatever it is, don't walk away from the Lord. It's not worth it. Run into his arms because it, it will be years of your life that you will not be able to get back. And, and all those things that become a mask, it will, will end up being more harm than, than anything good in your life. And so there's no purpose. What will happen is you reject Jesus, I will tell you, because it's clearly in Scripture. Turn with me to the book of Romans. We don't like talking about some of this stuff, but we, we have to. See, in, in the book of Romans, chapter 1. Verse 28, 128 of Romans. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 
being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, oh my gosh, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that which they commit such things are worthy of deaths, not death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, this is not all of what happened in my life. I did not become a murderer. And, but I can't justify the, oh, well, so because I didn't do this, that means, no, 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 no. I was a hot mess, hot and a mess. Yes. And I lived like it, going nowhere. What's crazy though, was that I knew that there was a plan for my life. You know there's a plan for your life. What are you running from? It's time to stop running. Whatever is ailing you, you need to deal with it. Why? Because you need it. You are a limited resource. Don't pour it out. Don't just pour that out. You're a limited resource. You are so precious to God. And He needs you. And you, <laughs> you need Him. And I did not know that for so many years. And this was, I don't even know how many years now. Well, 18 years ago, 17, something along, almost, a, well, a long enough time for me to have grown up and lay it down and deal. What was happening, though, was that I did not know how to deal. I rejected Jesus, so how would I know how to deal? <laughs> I didn't know how to do anything, and my life looked like it. There was no purpose. Great. And, and here's the funny thing. In the midst of doing what I was doing, and it's not like, oh my God, here's the catch, was this. I even would say to people, well, it's all stupid. My dance partner would ask, well, how are you going to feel if you don't win if I was doing a different type of competition? What do I care? I don't even care. It's all subjective. It's all subjective, okay? It's not like if I'm the fastest, I automatically win, and if I'm not, I'm a loser. It's not even that. It's subjective. If you like this, then you score higher. If you don't, then you don't. It's subjective. So why would I care? I didn't care. I was just double-minded, going to lay a little wind breeze, a little leaf. It was a mess. It was a mess, grappling and crying out. And here's the funniest thing is this, is that the person, and this is really the most ironic thing, when I first started, the very first night that I showed up at dance, I competed in dance in college, yank and crank. It, but here was the thing. The first person that became my dance partner was a spirit-filled Christian. <laughs> Here I am. I show up. I hate God. I'm uh, blah, blah, not now. Not a good, but and here I am. And the first person is a spirit-filled Christian. Come on, God has such a sense of humor. So here I am trying to run, and I'm surrounded by this spirit-filled Christian. The irony, right? But I'm still in this mess, and we're still friends to this day, which is fantastic. And we've been on a very long journey. So what happens is that, is that the purpose is gone, and the thrill is gone too. You might sing it. Now, what also will happen is found in Deuteronomy. <laughs> I just hope you get something out of this. This feels like a, just, just one of these messages, you know, that, that we're getting into some real stuff today. And the realness is, is what we need. You know, religion will mess you all up. You've got to get out of that and just, just know Jesus. I don't care about, well, do you know, did you? Who cares? No. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Because here's the day. Here's the thing. You reject Jesus. You'll be, you'll be a soldier for Satan. 30, 19. I call heaven and earth of Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that thou, that both thou and thy seed may live, or that you and your children may live. Well, when you reject Jesus, 
you reject living, which means you you really are you you just you are just a soldier for Satan, because you have to choose. See, it's kind of like not choosing forgiveness. No, you have to choose it because by default you are unforgiving. See, not making a decision is still making a decision because you're deciding not to make the decision. Oh, I'm wait. No, you're not waiting. You're procrastinating. Get up. See. So the, the, the kingdom of darkness is always accepting applications. You don't even need to fudge your resume to get in there. That you're just in there by default, okay? And I was a great agent in, in the way and people say, like, oh, couldn't have been that bad. Let me just tell you, it was 10 times worse than what you think it was. Okay, so let's not sugarcoat it. Just can't. Especially when you get down to the deep, 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 deep things of God and you begin to see what a wretched, what just the wretchedness of it all. But we try to fake placate it. Well, you know, sin isn't really sin. Mm -mm. God calls sin, sin, period. What it is, is by his determining factors, his definition, I had no purpose. I was going nowhere. And the kingdom of darkness was ruling my life. Why? Because there was no love. I did not choose love. I did not choose because it's all active. See, you must choose to get up and get yourself out. The Lord loves you. I did not know how much he loved me. I thought he was a I thought he was just just this God up there that, that hated me just like my earthly father that I never met. See? So kingdom of darkness, well kingdom, he's just gonna sprinkle. No, I'm salty now. Mm -hmm, for the Bible tells me tells us. See, but I was I was not doing well because of the choices that I made. You, you'll, you'll suffer the consequences if you reject Jesus. Now you might say, yes, but I go to church. I don't give a rip that you go to church because if you don't know Jesus, going to church is gonna do you absolutely nothing. I did that too. Oh, I look good when I went to church, honey, because you know what? There might be some homely looking guy that's looking for a husband. Oh, let me get dressed up. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, oh, a bunch of weirdo creeps in some of these places I went. Not all of them, but some of the places I went. Maybe it's just me. I'm the common denominator at that time. Creep attractor, wah, wah, wah. trigger alert, here she comes. Rattle, rattle, here come the cattle, they're all coming. Woo, hot mess, uh-uh. See, mm -mm. just because you go to church does not mean squat. It's great, fellowship, yes, we should. We need Bibles very clear on all these things. However, if you don't know Jesus, you're wasting your time. If you reject Jesus because you go to church, you just wasted your time. You need to know Jesus, and you cannot placate this any longer. I did it. It was years, too, too many, and God, and God set me straight. Let me just tell you, he set me straight. It was one of those push-pull-drag situations, and I got there, and I'm still standing, and I'm telling you this today because I'm still standing. That when I look at the things in my own life that, that I can't take back, that there's not even any regret now. It's they're all molding me into where I'm going. But the kingdom of darkness is waiting. The kingdom of darkness as is the kingdom of God. And when you choose, okay, you don't procrastinate, you activate to get in God's kingdom. And you say, Lord, we're going to work this out. Now, oh, Lord, I don't want to divorce you. I just don't want to talk to you today. So I need a break. And then here's what'll happen. Will you pray for me? Oh, yes, let's tear it up. Hallelujah. And the next thing you know, it's like a 45 minute prayer. All right, thank you, Jesus. Here we are. Bam, 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 bam. Getting it done for Jesus. See, <laughs> so there's no way out. There is just no way out. And I would not want to be out because I've been out and now I'm in. And now life can begin. See, don't reject Jesus. You need him. And let me tell you the next, I only have a couple more points left, but let me tell you this. When you reject Jesus, love is rejected by you. Now, what do I mean by this? We know that God is love, okay? And there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We, yes. But let me point this out. When you reject Jesus, okay, uh, love does not flow to or through you. It's there, but you're rejecting it. Okay, so people will try to love you, but you will reject it. And it might work something like this. And this is, this is a weird thing, but, but there might be nice people that you meet. 
and and that and that their agenda is pure but because you've rejected Jesus and that which comes from him all you will see is that that person's trying to use you oh they're just trying to use me oh they're just trying to get in my really grow up because they probably aren't but that would be you that is projecting that expectation because of your hurt see so love can't come to you people cannot help you because of the rejection of love operating into and through you so you are just like solar alert rejection rejection here it is don't come near me see and everybody else sees it everyone else sees the pain everyone else knows what there's something not right hold up they know it so what happens is that you end up rejecting love. See, when you reject Jesus, you reject love, but it's also then, re it's just rejected by you. You would not know it, but that's what happens. You just turn it away. Now, people may try to do some funky things that, that are just where they are thinking that, it, well, if I do this, you'll like me. And if I, do, if I increase my stock value, if I buy a million dollar home, will you date me? No, I didn't like you when you had a $200,000 home. A million dollar one's not gonna make me like you anymore. Maybe I like your bank account, but I don't like you. You're, mm -mm. no, see, not cool. Because the love moving can't. It's not love. So when you say love moving, it's not. Which comes back to being a shell, which comes back to blocking every single thing from moving in you, which means then, and I've already told you that the Holy Spirit is grieved. The Holy Spirit's not there. Which the really the biggest thing here, and turn with me to... <laughs> oh, you're going to laugh at what my scripture is. My scripture is Jesus 14, 6. That's what I wrote down. See, just pray for me before these messages are delivered. Uh-huh. That's the scripture I wrote down. The scripture is Jesus 14, 6. Find that in your Bibles. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. I just need to laugh today, although... Woo, we're gonna we're gonna get through this. This is really funny. It's actually John 14 6. But Jesus said, so we got it. It's somewhere in the Bible. It'll be like this uh this little this little hunt. Find it, find it. All right, 14 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When you reject Jesus, you have no access to the Father. Your access denied. Denied. You play hockey, all five hole. Nope. Six save. Denied. Nope. No hat trick for you. Denied. See? No access to the Father. You have shut it down. You have rejected it. And those of you, and hear me very carefully, hear me real clearly as well, you do not get to know God without Jesus. Well, you know, I don't need Jesus because I know God. No, you don't. I'm just going to be real clear. They've been lying to you. Those religious leaders that you've been listening to have been lying to you because they don't know God either. Because if they did, they'd tell you, you need Jesus. And they're not telling you you need Jesus, so they're lying fools. They have denied Jesus. They are denied access to God because... Because God, you only get access to God through the Father. Period. That's what the scripture says. Well, yeah, I don't believe the scripture. Well, you need to get to believe in the scripture because you know what? If you don't, you're going to live like it. And it's not going to go so well for you when it is your time to go before God on your judgment day. And you're like, whoop, there it is. Ooh, it's hot down here. Mm-hmm. Yep. But you'll live worse like it on this earth. And you probably live a really long, miserable, hellish life. I lived a real short one. And then I got square. And I stayed that way because I know the consequences of rejection of Jesus. I know the pain. I know the hurt. I know the torment, the turmoil, and the terrorizing, terrorizing that I experienced as a result. There is no access to God without the Father. Do not be so deceived that you believe this new age, humanistic, secular ideologies that do nothing but destroy. You cannot get to the Father without Jesus Christ. When you reject Jesus, you reject God. Well, you know, but yeah, but God's the Father of everyone. Now, God created everyone, but if you do not re accept His Son, you do not have access to call Him Father. And I'll give you an example. Men, let's say that some, some girl calls you and says, I think you're my daddy. Hmm. You're going to say, well, let's do a DNA test and find out. You might not just accept every person, especially you famous people. Not every every NBA player is going to say, oh, that's my kid. That's my kid. Well, it might be. That one might be. Kind of looks like my nose, but mm, don't know. It looks like my eyes here. 
Don't know. See, the only way that you can have access to the Father is through Jesus Christ. Try to reject Jesus and get to the Father and claim Him as Father. You cannot. You cannot. So when you, when you reject Jesus, you are rejecting everything that comes with Him. His love. You are rejecting the Holy Spirit. You are rejecting access to God. You are rejecting joy, gentleness, kindness, meekness. Love is patient. You're rejecting patience. You are rejecting life itself because God is love and life. You are rejecting the greatest gift that you could ever have, which is living in the, in the God-ordained creation that was already set before for you before the foundation of the earth. It's a really big deal. You are essentially taking away a covenant and saying it doesn't matter. And our society looks like it's done just that. America looks like it has just dumped God. And don't think there won't be judgment. Many people talk about revival, revival. Yeah, look at this place. Abortion's rampant. It's okay. We're, oh, well, God needs to do something about that. No, dear brother, dear sister, you do. It's what he created you for. Well, you know, this, this, look, mm-hmm. When we reject Jesus, when we open the door to compromise, when we elect the leaders that hate God and don't hide it, we got to start questioning what's wrong with us. Now what's wrong with them? They're telling you what they are. No different than if you're dating a man and he says, you know, I'm not ready for marriage. He's not lying. Hello, move on. Next, spiritual season of next. All right, you're not ready. Well, I'll find the one that is. Amen and amen. And here I am. And ooh, I look good. And you are ready for me. Amen. And he has to sit there. That's your problem. You have to look at these things. People will tell you right where they are. Where are you? Where are you? In the midst of all of this, let me just finalize with this point. God will still love you. God is love. What is so great about the God that we serve is that because he is love, he can't not love you. No, he's also a just God. See, we sometimes kind of, what's my correct word? We kind of sometimes dismiss some of these things, we might say, well, because God is love, then he just must love. And we, we ide ideolo ide idealize love based upon our carnality of Hallmark. <laughs> oh, it's love. But we don't understand love as God's love based on God's image of who God is. When you turn your back on Jesus... It hurts God. We don't often think about that because we think about what he's not doing to appease our flesh. Well, I need this because I need this. When God's like, well, yeah, but I created you for me. Where are you? You know, it's, it's something that we often don't grasp, especially now in our society where our society is so much about get-forget, usury, status, titles, and outward based appearance. We need to get to the ABCs, the appearance beneath the clothing. We need to get to the basics. We need to get out of religion and the performance ideologies of it. We need to get out of the drivenness and the titles and all the man-made facades that we've been living in. And we need to really get to the truth of things. We need to stop pushing the religious button on everyone and let people breathe. If you want the honest truth, it's, it's just, it's run its course. Okay. It's run its course. I like my hair and I like what I wear. So stop it. I mean, really, don't you like what you wear? And if you don't change it, you have the power to do that. Well, you know, they may not like it. Who cares what the under average think? Okay. Take that with you to court. <laughs> yes. You be you and you know, Jesus. And when you move in that direction, guess what's going to happen? When you start accepting Jesus, you start accepting life. When you start accepting Jesus, you accept his peace. You will be accepting his love and the love of a father in a way that you've never known before. It won't matter what you've gone through because you'll be seeing where you're going. And you'll be going to a place that you cannot go without Jesus. And I know this from personal experience. I know the pain of betrayal. I know the pain of going in. And not only that, I lived in another country. When, when I was left, and when I say left, that was, that was how it went down, left, no time to call anyone. Surgeries were canceled, Russian emergency, you will die if we do not do this now. Are you ready? Sign here, let's go. That's how it was. 
And you know what, I'm here to tell you that it took me a long time to come full circle, to get to the place of accepting Christ and all of him, but I will tell you it's the greatest decision that I ever made. I never want to grieve the Holy Spirit by my behavior, by my actions, because I love him. See, when you get out of religion and you're in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you won't have to be so grieved in your own life about what you've not accomplished. Yeah, well, you're on your way, right? Give yourself some grace. Jesus loves you. Your life will look a different way. The purpose that he has for you can come through. You know why? Because the purpose of your life can come through because you're willing to accept love. What's, what's the purpose of your life? To love. First Thessalonians 5.16, love. When, when you begin to walk in love because you accept Jesus Christ, then you can begin to love yourself and you can begin to love others. Love your neighbors as you love yourself, we're told and commanded. So when we deny all these things, there's no self-love, there's no self-compassion, there's no self-care as the new term is, there's, there's nothing. And we've got to kick all that nothingness out. You got to you got to get the squatters out. You got to evict every single thing that has set itself up against you, and you got to start moving in a way that you see the access that you have to the Father through Jesus Christ. And I am telling you that as you do that, the love of the Lord will move in your life in a way that you will be so forever changed. That you can wear whatever you want. You can worship however you want. You can you can speak about Christ from a love standpoint. And, and you'll be able to see that people are, are mesmerized by how much you love your Savior. And how much He loves you. And He always has. But now you'll be in a position to receive it. You may still have some struggles in this life, which we already know. Luke tells us this. I think it's like Luke 8, 36 or somewhere around there. The struggles of this life. Luke. Yes, there will be issues of life. Okay. You can't deal with the issues without Jesus. So why not just get the best one that you could have, which would be Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit to help you. So I pray today that you really take all of these things and don't live a miserable life rejecting Jesus. Because you will if you do. I pray that, that, that you really recognize that it's time for you to have peace. It's time for you to lay down the regulation of religion. It is time to lay down this hatefulness that's been moving in you because of the pain of the past. It's time to allow love to move to you, and it's time for you to start accepting it. It is time to welcome the Holy Spirit. Just usher the Holy Spirit into your life. Allow him to teach you, because the Bible tells us he is our teacher. He's our comforter. He's our advocate. I didn't know that either. Do you see how great the things are that I do not know? Hope you're really seeing this, because my amount of wisdom in this is the size of a pinprick. But you see, you'll be able to move in the purpose of your life, and now is the time for you to really get to it. Now is the time to lay down the past and say, you know what, past, you're dead. Mm, yeah, I gotta move on now. Bye-bye, I divorce you, see ya, sayonara, bye Felicia. Whatever it is, you need to move, get it gone. So you can move into the purpose. God has a greater purpose for me, and today is the day. Today is the day that this kingdom of darkness is beneath my feet. That's right. That is right. The kingdom of darkness is beneath your feet. Start living like it. Start moving in the greater things of God, and you're going to see it. You're going to feel the love of a father. You're going to see love everywhere. Oh, the society is... I don't care what society is. When you walk in love, you'll see love. You walk in hate, that's what you'll see. You see beige, well, guess what? That's what you're going to see, too. Paint a wall. You'll see it. You begin to see based upon the kingdom that you choose, based upon the God that you choose as well. And you'll be moving in a new, a new way, and I will never leave it. I am declaring and decree it so. And so welcome to relationship with Jesus. If this is something that you want, that you're saying, yes, I've been looking for so long, you know what? This is the greatest book. It's the Bible. It's changed my life. And it's really the words in this word that have changed my life. But it was really Jesus. That even in the midst when I hated him, he still loved me. When I ran, he still carried me. I, didn't, I was running, but it was him that was carrying me, even enabling me to run away from him. Imagine that. And see, he's done that for you. You just got to step back, hold up, pause, and see it. He loves you. Are you going to accept it? I pray that you do. How do you do that? You just ask him, Lord Jesus, I need you. I've been at this place. My family's a mess. My family's got COVID or whatever people are getting. 
whatever your family ailments, whatever your ailments, Father, I, I, I need help with my finances. I need, I need help, Lord, this betrayal that I've been experiencing. I've been trying to manage it and I'm not. Lord, I, I, I need to, I, I, I've been, I've been, I've been chasing gin and not you. I need gin, I need Jesus more than I need some gin. I need prayer more than I need pancakes. I need a savior more than I need to save not. You just talk to him and you tell him, he already knows. Lord Jesus, be the center of my life. Move in me today and help me, show me joy, show me life, show me peace, and he will. It's really that simple. I don't like templated prayers like that because my relationship is easy, is as unique as yours. But you know what? You need to tell him, I, I repent that I made a mess in my life. Because you did. He already knows. But it's a, it's a way to open the door to talk to him. And he's waiting. He was waiting for me after all these years. I dumped him and he just stood waiting. And I'm so thankful because I wouldn't be here. I really wouldn't be here. It was his saving grace in that hospital room or his common and uncommon grace that kept me alive to my saving grace and he's done that for you it is his common and uncommon grace waiting for you to accept his saving grace you need it father i thank you for your saving grace i thank you for all your grace i thank you father that it doesn't matter how messed up we are. It doesn't matter if we're not perfect, Father, because we're not. It doesn't matter what we've done or what we've become or what we look like or how we feel. Father, it only matters what your word tells us. And your word tells us we have, we have ability to come to you. Your word tells us that you give us peace. Your word tells us that you love us. And so we're here today. I thank you, Father, that all of our imperfections are really just beauty marks. That, that, that we can come to you in our brokenness and that you will lift us up, that you will help us to stand. So I thank you, Father, that in the midst of where we all are, that you're moving. In the midst of financial collapse, you're moving. In the midst of hunger, you're moving. In the midst of government tyranny, you're moving. In the midst of, of illness and sickness and coming close to death, you're, you're, you're moving. So, Father, we thank you for moving our lives today, and I thank you for every person who's coming to receive you. May they receive you. May they have joy everlasting and peace everlasting deep within their souls. And I thank you, Father, that you're all drawing us all near to, the, to you through the power of your Holy Spirit. May, be, may we be, be living in your presence for all the days of our lives. I thank you, Father, for what, what, what was shared today to just share. Father, I thank you that you have done it. I thank you that you give us all legs to stand and the strength to stay standing in and to and through these times. We are so blessed, Father, for your love. We thank you for it. Help us to treasure it. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And to God be the glory. Oh, he's just such a good God. And you know what? If you do need a Bible, we have Bibles to send. So, you know, wherever you are seeing this message, you can let us know. And then also, we can be found at julieblowministries.org and julieblow.com. So we're migrating our, our site to julieblowministries.org. And so go there. You'll find many things there. And so we pray every day, 214-586-0411. I pray that this message has blessed you, and I look forward to the next one that God has. I love you guys so much. Be blessed and stay faithful. Bye.